Okay, it's recording. I just got a message on my Facebook, my Trucker Doll Facebook page, and I'm going to go ahead and address this openly on YouTube because it's a very good question. So, a young lady, her boyfriend is going to work for a starter trucking company, one of the ones I used to start with. Um, I'll go ahead and say it. It's Werner. Um, she put it on my Facebook page, so I'm going to say it. It's Werner. You, you, and so, Jay Kennedy, this is for you, okay? Because it's not her, our boyfriend's not asking the question, she is. She said her boyfriend is in the fourth day of orientation and he was put on a safety hold. So what she wants to know is what reasons can a trucking company give you for putting you on safety hold? So it's a great video. I've never really done this, but I've been on safety hold before at Swift. It was when I was back at Swift back in years ago when I first started. So safety hold for a lot. A lot of different reasons, but I've never been on safety hold through an orientation. I can tell you I know some of the reasons in orientation they can put you on safety hold. So let's knock that out the way, and then we'll go talk about other safety holds. Safety holds are any time that the safety department does not feel that they should put you actively in a truck to run. Okay, So you could be driving the truck as a, as a driver, and all of a sudden they can say, park the truck, you're on safety hold. Okay. I was put on safety hold back when I started out three times. No, two times. No, three times. Three times. Okay? Three times. Okay? Safety hold can be for a lot of different reasons. Safety hold could be you need to take a class and you don't take this, this safety class that's, real, class that's required by the safety department and they can put you on a hold. You can't drive the truck. You can't go anywhere. Um, it could be a log violation that puts you on a safety hold. Um, if you have any violations, they can put you on safety hold until you meet with safety. Talk about that. I, that. That was one of the safety holds I had when I was doing the splits messed up. I got put on two safety holds for log violations back when I first started. And then the third one I got put on safety hold for was because I didn't get a class in time. I was supposed to have a load going through Oklahoma. It was during the time that there was a tornado. God is good. I got put on safety hold in Lancaster, Texas and had to do the simulator class, which I did this last time that I was pissed off about because I did that and was put on safety hold and had to relinquish my load, which I was happy about. Somebody else had to do the load for me and that person had to go through the tornado drama. So I'm personally happy I got put on safety hold. Safety hold can be good or bad. So it could just be, hey, you didn't get the class done in time. I'm going to put you on hold, get you to the closest terminal, and you got to take that class. Um, a log violation back in the day with paper logs. You were shut down. You couldn't drive the truck until safety talked to you on the phone and released you to be able to drive the truck. That's safety hold. Okay? But if you're in orientation and they're putting you on a safety hold, lots of reasons. So it could be something as simple as maybe you had a DOT physical. Maybe if he's overweight, if his neck's a certain side, blood pressure's up, anything they see wrong in that physical, they might be requiring him to do a sleep study. If they require him to do a sleep study, they're going to put him on safety hold because they don't want him driving their truck because the whole thing with CPAP is you're not staying through a solid sleep, so you're waking up intermittently. Therefore, you're driving in the truck tired. Therefore, you possibly could fall asleep at the wheel. Therefore, you could kill yourself and other people, causing us a lot of money. We really could give a damn if you die, but we don't want to have to pay out for everybody else. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be sarcastic, but that's the view of CPAP. They don't really give a damn. They don't care. If they cared, the company I was with formerly would have taken that damn item off that truck. They didn't care. They didn't care. They had a good say. They had a good year with a CPAP, with my CPAP report, and when I would have went the next year, then they would have put me on safety hold. Oh, you don't have a solid thirty days. Yeah, they would have. <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't mean to be sarcastic. It's true. It could be simple as simple as that. It could be something they're waiting for. It could be something showing up on his uh, DMV, um, his his driving motor vehicle record. Um, it could be anything in his employment record that hasn't been released and they're not feeling comfortable to release him to a truck yet. So if something they're waiting for for employment reasons that needed to clear, it's safety. safety. Basically, these boxes have to be checked before we put him behind the wheel of a truck with a trainer or any of our trucks for orientation. So those are some of the reasons for safety hold. Now, if he's a former driver for another company and he's not new to driving, 
and something came back from any of his employers negative safety hole mm -hmm. and then what they'll do is they may give him an opportunity to explain it so I'm gonna give you an example one of the girls that I was with at Pride, she came with three black females that came down to Pride to Utah. One of them immediately, they basically told her, you're fired, you're not going. She tested out, she backed, she did everything, they gave her a brand new truck. The next day we came in, they said, oh, we need to talk to you. They pulled her in a room, apparently she went for work for a private owner. She says the owner had been hitting on her and things didn't go well. Why she listed his ass, I don't know. But... He called Pride and told him a whole bunch of negative shit about her. Pride pulled her in. She then told him, hey, this is what took place. You know, I thought we had worked everything out. Boom, 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 boom. And I'm figuring he's doing this retaliatory because he, the guy was trying to hit on me. And I basically told him I wasn't interested. Now, I don't know what's true or false because to me, like I said, why she even listened to him? You don't have to. There's employers that you can just say, I don't want you contacting them. And, um, you know, or on your thing, like right now, if you pull my record up, I put what took place between me and a company based on me deciding I'm not moving this truck any further for safety reasons. And they're saying something different, but I'm up front. So now it's up to that company. When I walk in the door, who do you choose to believe? You know, all my other companies, I ain't abandoned crap, but I'm telling you for safety reasons, I'm not going to move this any further. They're refusing to fix it. And I got pictures. Choose who you want to believe. I'm just saying. So, it could be any of those things. Can I specifically tell you why? No. But like I said, if he's in orientation, either something's popped up from a previous employer, if he's a previous driver, it could be part of his DOT physical. Maybe he needs to do CPAP. That's usually a big one. Um, it could be if he's, if he's showing any kind of sugar in his urine, they may require a doctor's report for diabetes. Um, because one of my friends, he went to orientation, he was not released to a truck, because he's a diabetic, until he got a note from his doctor, A, saying that he was not on insulin, and B, um, saying how he was managing his diabetes, because I think he had a certain amount of sugars that showed up in his urine when they went to do the test. Um, that's the other thing, people, when you go to do your orientation, don't eat, do not eat, do not eat. Do not drink anything other than water. Sodas, even diet, can elevate your sugar levels. It also can make things appear in the urine that you don't want to appear. So don't, don't do any of that. I'm just telling you, avoid it. Avoid it like the freaking plague. Um, but Jay Kennedy, so I don't know specifically, but I can tell you, whatever it is, something has come up. Something that has come up that has caused them to stop or they're waiting for something so um, like I said if he's a previous driver my bigger concern with he needs to know whether or not any of his previous companies are saying anything negative about him so I'm gonna give you an example back in when I left uh, Swift back in 2010 same company I'm wearing the old, the old shirt here uh, when I left them back in 2010 I had a log violation when I resigned. Um, I left on good terms. I told her, hey, it's nothing really about that. I, I got some financial stuff I need to take care of. Um, I also wasn't making that much money with them. And they weren't paying that much money. And I was under a log violation. And I'd been put on a hold until I talked to safety about a log split. They took my student off my truck. That was a crazy student that would fight with his girlfriend on the phone. He was addicted to his girlfriend. Um, they took the student off my truck in Phoenix. And then I talked to them, and then they were going to send me back out, but I was not going to be able to train, I think, for 60 days or something like that. Because I was, because I had been, had to talk to safety, had a log violation. Now, when I went to leave, because I left, um, I was, I put my resume out there once I kind of got settled and kind of chilled out. And I ended up going to work for the bank because this company, Swift at the time, they blocked me based on that log violation and they were giving because I was trying to transfer over to Knight who they later merged with I was trying to transfer to them Knight would not hire me because of the bad split safety because of that bad split and I had two of them on my record they wouldn't they wouldn't hire me now I went to work for the bank for I don't even think I was there six months maybe four 
put my resume back out in trucking. And because I left on good terms, even though I had the bad split, they really didn't have any safety negativity against me except for the bad split. And really, they should not have popped the bad split up as anything because they hadn't written me up for it. It was only a conversation. So when I left, I did a very nice goodbye letter. Hey, great experience. Boom, boom, boom. And left me eligible for rehire. But if anything comes up safety related. So I don't know if he was a driver before. Now, if he's new, like I said, it could be his personal DMV. If it's his personal DMV, anything pop up, he's going to have to explain. Yes, he is. He's going to have to explain. Um, the other thing, if he has any felonies any kind of criminal activity that he did not disclose, that also. So smoking marijuana got arrested, misdemeanor, ticket, any of that stuff can cause safety holes. So I hope that answers your question. Anybody else can think of other stuff. Right now you're guessing in the dark. He really just needs to find out what it is. Apt if he's a new driver, probably something with his physical, CPAP, sugars, blood pressure. Um... Or something showing up on his personal DMV record. If he's an existing driver, one of his companies may have said something negative. I'm just saying. He can always get a free copy of his DAC report, which some companies pull. Some don't really look at anymore. The DAC is like your driving. It's like a. It's like your. It's like the credit report for driving for commercial drivers. It shows what you did at every company. But usually, if something five years older, they don't really give a damn about. All he needs to do is give a, a good response as to what took place. If he decided to leave a company for safety reasons, they weren't maintaining their equipment. Uh, you know, in my case, you know, hey, nice company, but I, I couldn't use my CPAP. They weren't maintaining the equipment the way I liked. Um, whatever my issues are, I'll put that out there. Don't have any ill will, but these are the reasons I left the company. And this is what I'm looking for. So, you know, that could be some of it, but again... Safety holds, they can hurt you as far as getting into a company. If they put you on a safety hold, you need to know why. And also, leaving a company. So if you're on safety hold or have anything under safety, that's why it was a big deal for me to make sure that I recorded the call with the guy from safety for the company that I'm with um, while I'm going to leave and make sure that all was clear. And that's why I watched my logs more than ever before this go-round because I learned from last go-round. And that's why I know, no, you, can't, you, you ain't got no issues with me. If I can drive, even if I go over hours to get somewhere safely, as long as I get somewhere safely, as long as I don't make it a habit, there's not crap you can say to me. And if it was inclement weather, not crap you could say. I had to get there safely. So, you, you, we could talk about it, but you don't have, it's not a violation. It's just a conversation. Know the difference. Uh-huh. Anyway, I hope that helps you, Jay Kennedy, and anybody else. I don't have a lot of newbies. So, before you go to a trucking company... Good idea, because Bill had to contact me, Trucker Bill, Trucker Bill, not Trainer Bill, when he had the little incident with Saya, and he was waiting to get hired. He had companies calling him, but there was kind of a lag, and some of the companies were giving him not good responses. He called me and says, what's that report you told me I need to look at? Because Bill is old school. It used to just be about your DMV. He didn't really have to deal with the DAC, and I gave him the information to get his free DAC. He got his DAC, and he was able to see what his companies said on there. I think it's a good idea to do that so then you know what to say on your applications to the next company because the companies, you there's one driver on here, I think he mentioned Trans Am. He left them and now they're telling him he's not eligible for rehire, but he said, I didn't abandon equipment, I didn't do any of these things. I don't know what took place, but it's good that he knows that so that if he applies somewhere, he knows that he needs to basically have a good explanation to his knowledge as to why he left and if that company decides to say something different, like I said, trucking is dirty. They, there's some companies out here that do some dirty stuff because they are so competitive to keep drivers. So some of them will do things so that you can't leave their company or to block you from being able to move forward uh, to something different and better for you. Uh, because they don't want to lose you and they don't want to make it look, look bad. Because it doesn't look good if a trucking company has a high turnover. That, that looks horrible. So you also have to look at that as well. So you, you got to know what's going on with your record. And like I said, your safety stuff is very critical. While I was with this last company, when I was with that TV watcher trainer, her, her driver manager said, do you have a trainee on the truck? She's like, yeah. She said, your trainee must can drive because she, that trainee don't have no hard braking, 
no driving too close there's no safety anything popping up for that driver of course i had three prior years experience i'm not riding up on people's ass i'm not dri i drive the load based on safety and what i feel i might not be uh <laughs> i might not be speed racer but your shit ain't gonna be turned over if it's up to me I'm just saying, it might not get there quite on time. I try to get it on time. But to me, getting it there safely is the most important thing. Me getting there safely is the most important thing. Not killing somebody else is the most important thing. Not damaging your crap is the most important thing. And then the time. And then the time. So hopefully this helps you guys out. Be blessed. Two and two. Jay Kennedy, I hope it helps you. Thank you for the question.